My Home by Dominika Radulescu. Scene one. I was born in exile. Where were you born? I was born on the way to the market. Oh, that makes sense, and that's, that's why we get along. Why we sort of get along. In, in any case, it's better than with the others who were born somewhere precise. I know, people who were born somewhere precise are always such sticklers for geography. They say things like, oh, I was born in a little town in the country of Gdansk, or a country of Smolensk, in the big city in Chester, Bester, in a small house, in a big house, in a house with a big yard, with a cherry orchard. I know what you mean, blah, blah, right? I was born here, I was born over there, I am the son slash daughter slash sister slash brother of so-and-so in the textile industry of so-and-so at the factory of paintbrushes. Good for us that we were born in the air. No way. In the air. If it wasn't so damn convenient to spend one's life on the road, I would say living in a constant exile is the best home there is. Were we ever stable? I don't know. What do you remember? Uh, I remember a, a pond, a blue pond with a red flower in the middle. I was very little and I had uh, a mother and a father. There were, they were not house counting people like we are, and they had a, a regular house with a foundation in the ground and all, mm -hmm. and a small potato garden in the front. Uh, my mother had always said I was born by the side of the road. After she gave birth to me, she put me in her bag and carried me around for a while until she met my father, and he built her a house with a foundation and a potato garden and a blue pond with a red flower, in the middle. That's a nice story, Nina. Mm -hmm. I never knew that about you and your family. My mother dropped me on the way to the market in another country as she was going to buy fruit. She crawled in the desert with me in her fruit bag right after she had given birth. She wanted to say I was born in the country of Lugubria, but so, when she came into the town and went to the authority to say she was asking for asylum from bad people in her country and produced me out of her bag of fruit from the market together with a guava and her oranges and said, I just gave birth to this. Everybody was stunned and said I was a country citizen right away. My mother was so happy. She died on the spot. That's a new better story than mine, Nina. I became an urban planner because the house I was brought up in right after my birth by the side of the road was in the middle of the fucking nowhere. And my mother wanted a city. She was a daughter of city people from Slovakia. I built a little city, see, a little city like the city of dance in Slovakia for my mother. And then I left because the war started. They always start wars in that part of the world. Hey, Lena, I'm getting sort of tired from all this walking and walking across the desert. Where are we going to live now? What do you say we visit the little planet here on our right? I think it's on our list of planets to visit. Maybe they'll give us a place to sleep for the night, and then if we like it enough, maybe we'll stay for a while. Scene two. We are immigrants. We didn't know this was metaphoric, but we don't understand the idiomatic expression of this planet. Girl on second planet told us the landscapes were edible and we should just go ahead and take a bite. We thought it was literal. Yearning is literal in the guts, right? My friend here misses terribly having born somewhere and she thought she might quench some of that thirst with bits and pieces of your Delicious landscape. Girl on second planet is an imposter. She knows nothing. She is an immigrant like you and has taken our jobs and our souls and our ideas. You know the way immigrants always do. Now she poses as queen of the planet and goes about reciting her stupid parts from back home where she apparently was some big shot in New York theater. If you ask me, I, I think she was deported. I think she must have crossed some illegal borders or some borders illegally, and they found out. The Homeland Security deported her and sent her to our planet where she has taken our jobs, used our foods, and consumed our landscape. Die, die, die. 
You both have to die of punishment and of missing and of yearning. Serves you right, you female imposters. Immigrant, illegal people, creatures, consumers. Mina pulls out a sword hidden beneath her cave and threatens to kill the man in white gown. Shut up, you self-important clowns. You are the imposter ones. Girl on second planet moved here to get away from the likes of you on the planet Earth. You immigrant women hater. Ugh. On second thought, I think I'll spare them. I don't want to live with their deaths on my conscience, even though they richly deserve it. And by the way, this was a Shakespearean rendition that I learned in acting school with sword fighting and all. It proves the point that girl on the second planet about how playing parts can save your life. Don't kill us, Mina. Have pity on us, Mina. We'll try to learn tolerance and respect for immigrants. We promise. Our parents were immigrants, too. They came from Lithuania. But they always cursed immigrants of other races, so we learn hate, too. <laughs> immigrants can be racist, too, you know? They, they, they can be intolerant of other immigrants. Yeah, all right. Whatever, you stupid clowns. You're free to live. I'll put back my great-grandfather's sword that he used in the Civil War of 19-something, and that Hamlet used to kill Polonius behind the curtain. And you've got a point there about immigrants also being racist and full of prejudices. That's why I'm like my beautiful, sentimental partner here. I think we should do away with the notion of home and forget about birth. Native this and native that and chose exile. Chose living on the road and eating the landscape. I'm hungry. I'm hungry for home, I'm hungry for dirt, for earth dirt, birth dirt, native dirt. All this exile stuff is crap. I'm going to eat everything. I'll eat everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat you all until I have a home.